Testament. Let, let's look at Malachi chapter 3. We're going Old, Old Testament today. Malachi chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 8. It says this. Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings you have withheld. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, this whole nation. Bring all the tithes, the tenth, into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house, and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Now watch out when the Lord says, test me. He says, test me, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you so great a blessing until there is no more room to receive it. How many want that kind of blessing over your life? So much that you don't have enough room to receive it. Then I will rebuke the devourer, insects, plague, for your sake, and he will not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vine in the field drop its grapes before harvest, says the Lord of hosts. All nations shall call you happy and blessed, for you shall be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. Lord, I just pray right now you open our ears, open our hearts. Let our ears hear and let our hearts receive that we would walk in your word, that it wouldn't just be something that we hear, but it'd be something that we walk in and it would change us from the inside out. In Jesus' name, everybody who believes it, come on, say amen. We first have to look at this and, and see that the Lord was speaking to the nation of Israel and they were his chosen possession. He had chosen them as his people. And what he was doing is he was calling them back to the way that their heart was postured. Now, some read this and get way off construed, so I want to set the plane really quick, that in this message, I'm not only talking about money, all right? Some people can get weird with the church and money. I just want to set the groundscape. I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about the three T's here, okay? You ready? Three T's are this. Time, talent, and what's the last one? Treasure. Time, talent, and treasure. What the God was doing with his people is he was calling them back to a heart posture to receive his blessing. I want to talk today about the heart posture, or more importantly, the hand posture of what we have to do to step into the life that is blessed. The life that is poured out blessing and favor upon. He was saying, you have robbed me. And Israel was like, what are you talking about? We are your people. We are following you. We are giving our lives to you. And you're saying, but you, you've neglected knowing that I am the one who provides. I want to ask you today, as we talk about uh, the tithe of things, what, what they're talking about is the one-tenth. One-tenth. And if you think about that, you break that down in your life, you have time in your day, time in your week, time in your month. You have talent and only so much to give out. And you have treasure, only so much money in the bank account. How many wish you had more? All right. Always, right? You have all this, these things, and, and God was telling his people, when you receive what I, God, have blessed you with, I'm asking for you to take the first of what you receive and give it back to me so that your heart can be postured in gratitude to the Lord. He said, you've robbed me and you've turned to think it's all you. When you make your money on your grind, when you spend in your time to build your kingdom, when you use your talent to build what you can see, you are being selfish and robbing God of the gratitude he deserves. So I want to talk about the tithe because this is so important. Now I was... I grew up in the church. I was raised in the church. I think I, was, I changed my, my mom changed my, well, I didn't change my diapers, but my mom changed my diapers in the church. I was born and boom, right there in the church. So I grew up in the church and we grew up with this mindset of tithing. 
And it, it just was a, a normal for me. We, we just always, the 10%, when money came in, the first 10% we set aside. In fact, my parents even got us jars as kids. I don't know if anybody else grew up in the church, but they did tithe, savings, and spending, right? And then you put money in the jar. If you get a dollar, how much goes in the tithe? You're like, it's the weekend, I don't want to think. 10 cents. Savings, 10 cents. Nine, 80 cents, <laughs> what's left? 90 cents. Uh, 80 cents goes in the rest, right? And that's just how we were raised. So all my life, this is all we knew. Tithing, saving, and spe- now, I was a better saver than my brother and sister. They spent everything that was in the, it was like burning a hole in their pocket when they had a dollar. But I saved everything. I remember when we first got married, I had this savings account. It was like enormous for me. You know, I was like 20 something years old. So I'm like, I got this big savings account. I remember when I got married, I'm like, all right, spending spree. And I got a, I got a motorcycle and I got a quad and I got, you know, all the stuff that comes with the house where I got a TV. I got the, the, the good sounds that becomes a TV. I spent it all. Oh, I told you that story just so you know I'm selfish. But I remember that all growing up, this was just a way of doing things. But I watched my household be blessed all throughout my childhood, all up until I went to college. For it became a part of my life when I became my own thing. So when I moved out, I got married to Ashley. She was raised in the church with godly family. They're here today. Phil and Sherry, you let's go. Got mom and pops in the room. She was raised the same way. So when we came together and we decided how do we want our house to be, we decided we want our house to be blessed. So we're going to keep the tithe. We're going to tithe on our treasure. We're going to tithe on our time. We're going to tithe on our talent. And therefore, everything that comes in, we're going to keep God at the focus. We're going to keep God the provider. I will tell you this. When you, if you live a life where this isn't a part of your life, and I'm not here to say you, you have to do this. I'm here to tell you what the word of God says and to give you a pathway to favor and blessing, okay? But I will tell you this. If you live this life, of bringing to God, your heart is postured to know where your help comes from. You are saying, God, thank you for what you've given. Thank you for my job. Here's a tenth. I, I did. And the funny thing is, some people get so caught up in the tithe and like, why? Well, I, I don't think we need a tithe. This Old Testament, you can look through all the commentary and studies and all. Uh, Jesus mentions it in the New Testament, but not the point. The point is this, is when we get so caught up in the 10%, we forget what it's for. The 10% is to cause your heart to be attached to God as the provider and gratitude for your spending. And what happens is when you get this principle in place and you start to tie the time, talent, treasure, you realize you can't outgive God. How many know that's true? Come on, I need some people in the room to tell everybody else how, how, how true that is. When you put God first, it's incredible. You cannot outgive God. So I wrote this down. This is in the notes. The tithe is the way for us to set our hearts on trust in Him and gratitude to Him. The tithe is a way for us to set our hearts on trust, to trust Him and to have gratitude in Him. Look at Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 9, says this. Honor the Lord with your wealth. What is your wealth? Everything that's been given to you, right? And you look around, no one's story is the same. Some are more blessed than others, right? Some have more resources than others. Some have been given a different story than others. But needless to say, he says, if you honor God with your wealth, does that mean we're all going to give the same? No. No. Does that mean I'm going to give the same talent as you give? No. I thank God. Does that mean that I'm going to uh, give the same time as you can? No. Absolutely not. But I know that when we honor God with our wealth, look what happens. With the first fruits of our crops, because he's talking about farmers and, and Israel, how they're planting in the ground. He says, then. Everybody say, then. 
Then, if you honor God with your wealth, what's been given to you, time, talent, treasure, when you honor him with that that's been given to you, he says, then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Can I just tell you this? Our obedience leads to his overflow. Our obedience, saying yes to the king, leads to him overwhelming us with the goodness that's in his hands. Our obedience leads to the overflow. I need some help. Adara, can you help me real quick? Come on, give it up for Adara. Come on up here, Adara. Come up on stage. All right. I got you a fancy schmancy dollar. I know. Wow, that was quick. There it is. George Washington. Now, a lot of times when we have our wealth, here is the tenth. This is what the Lord asks for, right? Just to get us started. Because believe me, you won't stop here whenever you start doing this. But when you have a tenth, hold that in your hand. Just in case. I don't want it walking off. Now what happens is, hold that in your hand for me. What happens is, some, uh, sometimes we, we get in a predicament, I like to call it, or life happens, and all of a sudden, we close our grip. Because we got to hold on. Got to hold on to everything. Every dime matters. Now here's the problem with this. The problem is that God has things. Now listen, this is a one-hand illustration, so I want to put that in your pocket or something. Close that up. Now when you live life that's gripped and the Lord wants to pour out his blessing on you, does that hurt? I'll come down a little bit. I'll come down a little bit. It's a little cold, I know. I'm sorry. What happens is, oh, get that out of here. You can't receive what the Lord wants to pour out. And he says, listen, you honor me with your wealth, there's so much that I want to give you, but I can't as long as you're holding on to what's rightfully mine. Because the tithe isn't, it's not about the church needs your money or, you know, the kingdom can't be built unless we tithe. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is when we tithe, we open ourselves up to receive what the Lord wants to do in our lives and through our lives. Can I tell you it's not just for you? Your blessing is not just for you. Your blessing is not just for your life. It's not just for your family. I know that very true. Because I prayed, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. And now I'm seeing the blessing of my life is now pouring into others. And now what God has given me now is a blessing for other people around me. See, what happens is when we open our hand, go ahead. Because see, you don't understand how big the Lord's bank account is. You have no idea. No idea all that he has. What happens is when we open our hands and we say, Lord, here you go. Here's the little bit that you, you ask of me. This is, I'm just obeying you. I'm stepping into the obedience. And we give him the, the piddly little tithe, right? It's not much. But we give him the piddly little tithe. He goes, okay, all right. You know where your help comes from. So I can pour out blessing on you. And what happens is then we receive and we give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Drop it. And then he pours out more, and then you give it away. Give it away. And then he pours out more, and you give it away. Pours out more, give it away. Pours out more, give it away. This is what God wants to do in your life. Thank you. <laughs> give it up for Adara. This is what God wants to do in us, and this is the picture you have to get in your mind, is when you start to open your hand as a blessing, the Lord can't help but to pour his blessing on you so you become a conduit of blessing. So he pours out, you give it away. Pours out, give it away. Pours out, give it away. Pours out, give it away. Now, if you're married, make sure you're on the same page with this. I was told that my father-in-law, at the end of every year, would empty his savings account and give it to missions. And then he got married and didn't give this information over to Sherry. And so at the end of the year, she's like, 
I thought we had all this money. He's like, no, we give it to missions. So make sure you're on the same page, okay, with your household before you're, you're emptying your bank account. But it's incredible because as we obey, as we step into a life of being obedient, we come into an open hand blessing. And I just want to challenge you today. What are you white knuckled on right now? What are you holding fast to that's so temporary? And when you think about it, <laughs> that, if you're getting so caught up in that, and you're going to miss out on everything God wants to pour in, because here's what I, I believe. I believe that in hard times that are coming to our world, I believe that in the darkest seasons that are coming to our city, that the church will be the resource in the midst of darkness. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that a shaking is coming so heavy to the earth. It says, but the glory of the Lord appears over you. Nations will come to your light. Kings, those in charge, will come to the brightness of your dawn. What is he saying? He's saying, there will be days that are hard. There will be days when the world is falling apart. But I want to set up my church to be the light in the middle of darkness. I want to be, I want to have a church that is a blessing in the time of need, that the people will come to this place to say, can you give some help? We say, yes, the Lord has blessed us so much, here you go. The Lord has blessed us so much, take a meal. The Lord has blessed us so much, take a jacket, come on, take a meal, take a backpack full of stuff. Come on, take all the stuff that we can give you. Let's make some more. Because the Lord is blessing us so much. How many want to be that overflow blessing? The open hand blessing. And if we become an open hand blessing, then all of a sudden we start getting so much that we look around for need. <laughs> and instead of doing this, whoa, whoa, don't let anything touch this thing. Instead of doing this, now, now we're like, all right, where's a need? Where can I fill a need? Because I got so much, I, I got to give it away. I got to give it away. I got to give away time. I got to give away talent. I got to give away treasure. Because that's what happens in your life when God gets involved. I want to look at uh, Psalm 23, verse 1. Psalm 23, verse number 1 says this. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. Another translation says, I lack nothing. When the Lord is in his rightful place as the leader and the provider, you lack nothing. My friend, when you take the shepherd's staff from the shepherd, when you take his job, you say, Lord, why don't you just hang up your coat? I'll take it from here. Because that's what we do. When we don't, bless, we don't give to the Lord, when we don't give our time, talent, treasure, we're saying, Lord, I can take it. I can handle it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it through. I'm going to strive through to the end. But when we give him his rightful place and say, Lord, listen, we are just sheep. Come on, somebody give me a bat. You know you wanted to. If I were sitting there, I'd be like, bat. You say, Lord, we're just sheep. We don't know where to go. We don't know where we're going to find the blessing. We don't know the opportunities we're supposed to walk into. We need your leading. And that's why we bring him the tenth. We say, Lord, here's my time. Here's my talent. Here's my treasure. I give you the first, not the over, not, not, not the extra. Not if there's enough at the end of the bills and all the things. That no, 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 no. I'm saying first. Don't put him on the calendar after you put all the other stuff in. <laughs> Me and Ashley, when we have our, our planning meeting for the year, we go through the calendar. And if you know my wife, you know she's a type A organized personality, and she's amazing. And I always say, like, you either marry one or you hire one. And I just got blessed. I married one. And so we'll sit down and we'll, we'll look through the year. And you know the first thing that we put on our calendar is ministry and church. Why? Tithing. You better believe we're going to be in church every time the doors are open. You better believe we're going to be at every ministry function we can. You better believe it. Why? Because he's king. I'm not. 
My job, our, our, our creative firm, is not king. There are many clients that are, they know, don't ask me to be anywhere on Sunday morning. In fact, there was one time we were in Vegas, and their, their event went over into Sunday morning. And I we told them, I was like, hey, I'm so sorry. I got to be back to preach on Sunday morning. They're like, okay, we'll get you a red eye. And so, anyways, it came down to the end of Saturday night, and the flight got canceled. And we were like, what are we going to do? You know, I'm in, I'm in Vegas. I'm like, you can't drive. So I'm like, what are we going to do? And stops the event, comes back, and he goes, hey, you find a flight. We've got to get him home. <laughs> well, now, this wasn't like a, now, you must. I didn't do anything, but I set a standard that that's priority over all other things. God is our priority. And so, therefore, when we sit down and we think about our time, he goes first. He goes first. Uh, when Zion uh, signed up for football, the first thing the coach sent us was a text. Hey, by the way, we have uh, practices on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sunday mornings. And you know what we text back? We won't be there on Sunday morning, but Zion will be happy to be there Tuesdays and Thursdays. You know what he wrote back? All right, I'm going to change it. <laughs> so we changed practice off of Sundays. Why? He's king. Football's not king. Nothing in my life is king. He is. So the tithe is very important to me. He must go first. Because when he goes first, everything else works perfectly. When he doesn't go first, good luck, my friend. You want an inheritance where it's overflow? It starts with obedience. It has to. It starts with life that obeys the king and says, all right, the first is yours. Why do we come to church on Sundays? Can we talk about that? Why is it so important that we come to church on Sundays? Is that a religion thing? No, I'll, I'll tell you why. Number one is to celebrate what God's doing, right? It's iron sharpening iron. When we come together, how many feel so good when you leave church, right? I right, count down the days. I can't wait. You know, sometimes when the week's crazy, I'm like, oh, just get to church. <laughs> I need my church family to sharpen me. It's so good. That's number one. But number two, it's tithing your week. It's saying, Lord, you have the first day of the week. Here you go. And it's a piddly hour, hour and a half sometimes when I'd preach long. And we give them that time to say, Lord, the rest of the week is yours. I gave you the first. It's a tithe of our week. And so I do all this to challenge you to say, when the Lord's a shepherd, when the Lord is your shepherd, he becomes your safety and becomes your inheritance. There's warning labels all over the place. Warning labels on cigarettes. Did you know they started putting pictures of like black lungs and People dying and cancer, all the stuff on, on cigarettes. And they have a warning on there. If you smoke these, you will die. Your cancer and all the stuff. And yet still, people will smoke them. Now, the dollar comes with a warning sign. I don't know if you knew this. Did you know the dollar has a warning symbol? If you flip it over on the back, it says this. In God, we trust. Now, it's a warning label because how many know it's so hard that when you hold on to this thing, to trust God instead of it. Even though we read it, in God we trust, still it's so hard because we want to trust in something that is very physical and we can feel it. And yet God is saying, if you will trust me, if you will give me the first, if you will give me the tithe, I will pour out so much you can't handle it. You can't even handle it. It's so much. Open hand blessing. Now this series, we're just going to unpack it. Next week, we got Phil and Ashley. They're going to be talking about living for a legacy. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't miss it for anything. We're going to be talking about um, overwhelming generosity. I'm talking, I mean, I'm telling you what, the Lord's going to radically impact your life through this if you allow it to. But we have to start here because this is like the first part of anything. You can't be generous unless you're, you're here first. So I want to call you to just reflect right now over your life and say, what is the first step? For you to come into a life that is open hand to the Lord. Does it look like starting to tithe? Then do it. Don't, don't, don't wait. Don't.
don't say someday when I have enough. Let me tell you, you'll never have enough. Because until you start tithing, you'll never have enough. <laughs> I promise you. But when you start that flow, it's like the faucet comes on. Everything that the Lord was wanting to give you comes out then. And when you finally receive it, you're like, oh my goodness. If it's getting involved in serving, if it's coming out to an outreach, and being a part of giving away backpacks, of giving away food, friend, do it. If it's looking at your calendar and saying, how can I put God as a priority? How can I look at my week and say, all right, where am I going to fit my devotion to the king in? If it's that, then do it. Don't wait. Don't rob God of what's his. If it's coming and being a part of a dream team, come on, and using your talent here to build the kingdom of God, friend, do it. We got Billy up in the sound booth right now. Given his talent. I know, Billy, there's a million places you could be right now. A million things you could do. We're so grateful for you, man. Given your time, given your talent, given your treasure, and oh, what the Lord will do with those who have open hands. Are you ready? Are you ready? Psalm 65, and I close with this. Psalm 65, verse 4 said, blessed are those who choose. Everybody say, choose. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. And I want to read this in context because I believe that the Lord, the Bible says that the Lord cho chooses pre-us choosing kind of a weird thought but the reason that you're in this room is because the lord chose you the reason that you're hearing the message you're hearing right now is because the lord predestined you to hear it it's weird to wrap your head around but when you start to step into the obedience of the lord you start to realize you are chosen you have this life ahead of you he has chosen you to be in his courts and inside of those courts inside of his house are the good things and this is where we realize that when we come to Jesus and he becomes our inheritance, we realize we don't need anything else but him. And that's where it all begins. That's our inheritance is we inherit the Lord, the king of kings, the shepherd, the one who leads us to health, nourishment, and safety. The one who gives us our inheritance to be so much that generations from now will feel it because of the Lord blessing us. Zion and they will live in a blessing. We are living in a blessing because of what Phil and Sherry sowed when they were young. Right? This isn't just perhaps. This isn't just coincidence that we're living in a blessing flow. It's because of the seeds they already, they already planted. And I want to ask you, what seeds are you going to plant now so that your tomorrow will have the overflow? The open hand blessing so that God will pour out so much that people look at you and say, what? How in the world did you get all that? How in the world? And I'm not talking all material. I'm talking about everything. When he pours out, it doesn't just come material. He's the God of peace. He's the God of joy. He's the God of strength. He's the God of the sound mind. He's the God of self-control. He's the God who gives us the ability to live. So when you step into the blessing, it's not just money. It's not just dollar for dollar. It's not just time for time. The Lord blesses every part of you. And that's where you realize he is the inheritance. Whew. Come on, can we pause right now? Lord, we thank you that you are our inheritance. Lord, I thank you that you are enough. That you give us your presence and you are enough. You're enough for us. You're enough for us to pour out into others. You are enough. I want to pray over you as Sean comes. I want to pray over you that the seed that God is calling you to give in this season uh, would be a seed that is planted for what's to come. You can't look at it as like a seed planted now or it'll just discourage you. 
because you're like, ah, oh, put in the ground, you know, buyer's remorse or giving remorse or whatever you call that. You give your time and you're like, man, I didn't really have that time to give. Or you give your talent and you're just like, ah. Oh. But that you realize that today's seed is tomorrow's overflow. That the decision I make today is the one I make for tomorrow. The door I walk into today is the door that leads me to where God wants me to be. So I just want to pray over your seed today. I don't know what you have in your hand right now that the Lord is calling you to give. To give. And in a month of gratitude, right? It's Thanksgiving. We're in November. It's crazy. In the month of gratitude, that we don't forget to keep our hearts pointed to our resource. And not just like, Lord, bless me. You are my resource, so give me. You are my resource, so I, I deserve. Nah. I thank you for what I've been given and I honor you with what I have. That's honoring him with your wealth. It's honoring him with the time you have now. It's honoring him with the talent you've been given now. It's honoring him with the, the treasures that's in your hand. So I want to pray over your seed that the Lord blesses it. Because seed planted in his soil becomes prosperity, blessing, and favor. I'm not a prosperity preacher, but I've seen it in my own life, so I can't help but preach it, all right? Does that make sense? Like, I've seen God move in ways that I never would have wrapped my head around, even the building we're standing in. Like, blows me away. It's beyond. But Lord, I pray for this seed. In fact, everyone in this room, if you've got a seed to sow, why don't you just stand to your feet? You feel like God is calling you to plant a seed. Just stand up. Yeah, awesome. That's great, man. See you in the back, all right. Stand with that seed. Stand with that seed. Yeah. That's hard, I know, because the seed looks like your, your resource, right? So, well, if I give that, I won't have enough. Yeah, you can't afford not to give it, let me tell you. If you have that seed in your hand, would you just symbolically just raise it up to the Lord right now? Let's just surrender to him. Lord, here's my seed. Here it is. Here's my time. Here's my talent. Here's my treasure. Lord, I want to honor you with my wealth. Not because I have to, but because you are king. You are Lord. And what you want goes. And I can step outside of that. I understand that. I can choose my own way and choose my own path. You give me that right. That's the freedom that we enjoy. But Lord, in this moment, full freedom, full freedom of choice, we say, here it is, God. Here's our seed. And God, right now, I pray blessing over every seed planted. That today, those that are deciding to step in and tithe their first fruits of their money, Lord, bless it in Jesus' name. Come on, can you just pray with me? Bless it in Jesus' name. In fact, the Bible says, bless the cheerful giver. Blessed is the man who gives cheerfully in his heart. So, Lord, bless that seed. Let it go further than they could ever even comprehend. Bless their business. Bless their work of their hands. Bless their worship as they worship you every day. Bless it, God. God, I pray for every seed of time in the room. That as they plant those seeds of time... God, you would bless them, and they would be so productive in the hours that they have. We don't just say God's speed. We mean it. You give God's speed. We've seen it in our own week. Where we're like, how do we do 120 hours and 40 hours of work? It doesn't make sense on paper, but Lord, I pray that you would bless it in Jesus' name. As they give time, as they say, Lord, here you go. Here's the first of my week. Here's the devotion time of my day. Here's the time I'm going to spend serving you and giving Lord, bless their time. Bless their time. We stand on that promise that you said, if we honor you with our wealth, 
You will give so much that it overflows. We won't even have room to receive it. No room to even receive it. And Lord, I pray for every talent in the room that we're given. Woo! Whether it's creative, whether it's organization, whether it's hospitality, whether it's food, whether it's uh, video editing, whether it's uh, social media, PR, I don't care what it is. That seed, I pray you would bless it and make it go further, God. Further than any schooling could give them. Come on, I stand here, an unschooled videographer that is standing in rooms I shouldn't because your hand of favor and blessing is upon me. I pray for that same blessing. Come on, I pass that on to this room. That they would stand in rooms with kings and queens, those that run things, those that have the last say, places they shouldn't be because they're unschooled for it. God, give them access to that as they give their talent to you, as they plant in kingdom places, as they plant in good soil. Do a work that no man can undo. Unlock doors that no man can lock. Pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody that received it, come on, say amen. Amen.